Um, welcome to um, uh, to all the professors and Pia uh, Acosta for the, uh, the uh, thesis defense of Pia Acosta. Um, I will read the resolution. I will switch into Spanish. Um, and uh, before you start um, presenting your topic, we're going to silence uh, uh, so that we can listen to you in more detail. Okay. Um, and we won't interrupt you during the. Okay. So give me a second. I will. Uh, read the resolution. Okay, I will see. Um, Universidad Nacional de Asunción, Facultad de Filosofía, eh, el, eh, Asunción 28 de agosto 2023. La resolución número eh, 1072 eh, barra eh, 2023, por la cual se conforma el tribunal examinador encargado de evaluar la presentación y defensa de Tesina por perteneciente a la, a la universitaria María Pía Acosta Quevedo, de la carrera de licenciatura en lengua inglesa del Instituto Superior de Lenguas de la Facultad de Filosofía. Eh, el expediente, visto y considerando el expediente número 2201 del 2023, el memorando número 127-2023 de la directora del Instituto Superior de Lenguas, la doctora Valentina Canese Caballero, por la cual se solicita la conformación del tribunal examinador para evaluar la presentación y defensa de la tesina titulada Social and Emotional Learning Skills Development in Bilingual English Elementary School, perteneciente a la universitaria mencionada María Pía eh, a Costa Quevedo, de la carrera de la Licenciatura de Lengua Inglesa del Instituto Superior de Lenguas de la Facultad de Filosofía, una. Para el efecto, es, eh, eh, la mesa está conformada por eh, la presidente, que es la doctora Valentina Canese Caballero, eh, eh, miembro, la que le habla, la, que le, la, eh, la magister Rocío Masolén, eh, de, eh, Julia Denise Masolén Fran, y eh, la, eh, la otra miembro es la magister Sharon K. Weaver de Brizuela. Eh, la ley 4995 barra 13 de educación superior, artículo 33, eh, la autonomía de las eh, universidades implica fundamentalmente lo siguiente, elaborar y reformar sus propios eh, estatutos, los cuales deben ser comunicados al Consejo Nacional de Educación Superior, eh, que, eh, eh, que nosotros ya comunicamos y a partir de esto salió esta resolución, ¿verdad? Eh, y eh, fue aprobado este consejo, esta mesa examinadora, eh, con los miembros mencionados anteriormente. Ok, so, eh, ahora vamos a escuchar la presentación eh, y la defensa de la alumna Pia. Ok, so, I, I will silence my microphone. Good afternoon, professors and people from the audience. I'm Maria Pia Costa Quevedo, and today I will defend my thesis about social and emotional learning skill development in a bilingual English elementary school. This study focuses on answering the questions of how social and emotional learning can be beneficial for elementary students and teachers. However, these programs are not popular in Paraguay, and for that reason, only some schools include them in their curriculum. This may lead to children being limited in developing SEL skills in their daily lives, like managing their emotions, building healthy relationships, and feeling empathy. The research purpose of this study is to recognize the benefits of including a social and emotional learning program in a private bilingual school. The research objective of this study is to determine the factors that make social and emotional learning an important school program for the child's educational development, to recognize the benefits children can have from including social and emotional learning programs, 
identify the factors that could be influenced if it turns to out, out to be a positive program for children, identify the most effective strategies from the program according to teachers, analyze how social emotional learning programs could be given more importance in children's daily life. As for the research questions, the main question and ask, what factors make social emotional learning an important program for the child's educational development? And the secondary questions, how can children benefit from including SEO programs? What are the factors that are influenced or affected by the program? What are the most effective strategies from the program according to teachers? And how could social emotional learning programs be given more importance in children's daily life? Mm -hmm. Social emotional learning is fundamental because times are changing and there is more awareness of the fact that students' education and mental health can, be, can make a huge impact on them. For that reason, educators need to be prepared to face these new challenges that are experienced in the present days and be able to prepare their students for them. It also aims to show how teachers from a private bilingual school benefit from being able to have access to the program and how it influences the students. The limitations, the limitations and ethical concerns of this study are, is that it is not a representative of all cases of bilingual students. It is not possible to generalize the results to all elementary population, and it has even given schools consent with personal data protected. Social and emotional learning is an integral part of education and human development. Castell defines SEL as the process of helping all young people and adults develop the fundamental skills for life effectively. It was first known about this topic in the late 20th century and early 21st century when John Dewey and Alfred Adler recognized the importance of emotional intelligence and self-awareness in individuals' behavior and learning outcomes. The official creation of, F F of SEL was when Castell was founded in 1984 by Daniel Goldman and Lina Lantieri. CASEL stands for Collaborative for Academic, Social and Emotional Learning, and it plays an important role in implementation in schools. Social and emotional learning is divided into five core competencies by CASEL. These are designed to provide a clear framework from which to learn skills that will benefit students throughout their lives. We have five core competencies, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. The first core competency is self-awareness, which is the ability to recognize and name personal emotions. This awareness helps build strategies for dealing with feelings with the support of teachers, parents, and members of the community. The second core competency is self-management which is the ability to regulate and control emotions, thoughts, and behaviors, like stress management, organizational skills, ability to set goals, impulse control, and self discipline The next core competency is social awareness, which is the ability to show understanding and empathy for others. It is being able to place themselves into other people's shoes and to think about how their actions may affect others. The next core competency is relationship skills, which is the ability of getting along with others, working in teams, and dealing with conflict effectively. Some people find, find creating relationships easy, but others not. And all good relationships can be hard to learn because they include all of these skills of the, of the other competences. And last but not least, responsible decision making, which is the ability to make a positive and constructive choices based on individual and social factors which implies in knowing how to take some time to consider choices, think about the consequences, and make the best decision. <laughs> As for the benefits of this study, social and emotional learning research shows that it makes a difference. Students who participate in social and emotional learning do better academically, improve their attitudes, behaviors, and mental health. Some limitations regarding teachers' perspective is that they lack of resource and budget limitation, they lack of time available to develop the curricula, they lack of professional development, and they are over workload. Mm. For the current applications, 
I'm gonna mention a few programs that that the, that the, the schools usually use to implement SEL skills. They are second steps, ruler, paths, and zones of regulation. Second steps emphasizes in building empathy, problem solving, and responsible decision making. Ruler emphasizes in recognizing managing emotions effectively. It also focuses in promoting a positive climate at school. Past its objective is to improve emotional understanding and self-control. And so sounds of regulation, it focuses on the identification of emotions. And the differences between all these curriculums are their philosophies, target age groups, specific focus areas, and the way they deliver content. Mm -hmm. It's important also to mention that this program can be implemented without a curriculum. There's just a few steps that mm -hmm. need to be taken care of. Like, for example, is it to identify the specific learning goals students will achieve. Since there is no fixed curriculum, the teacher has the freedom to focus on the skill that the classroom needs in that moment. Mm -hmm. It's also important to measure, measure participants' knowledge and their skill levels, to create learning tracks, and regular feedbacks to see if participants or students are on the right track. And last but not least, having visual support because it makes them to compromise about all what it is giving in the class, like for example, posters, it can be videos, it can be music, whatever it catches students' attention. <clears throat> the type of study it is labeled as a case study because it, of its very specific sample of the unique characteristics of the school where the research took place. It's also labeled as a mix, mixed approach because it was done with surveys and interviews with open-ended and closed-ended questions. This study was, was taken in Asuncion, Paraguay, and the survey was a Google form format to teachers from kinder five to fifth grade, mm -hmm. with 42 participants in total. The interviews were done to gain more in-depth information with three teachers of each grade level, an English teacher, Spanish teacher, and instructional assistant, 18 participants in total, and interviews to the technical team, school counselor, academic support, and school principal. The data collection, as mentioned before, the instruments used for questionnaires and interviews, and the procedure, the procedure were questionnaires, interview to the 18 teachers and interviews to the technical team. For the data collection, it is labeled as a quantitative and qualitative study and also a thematic analysis. Mm -hmm. For the results, question number one, how can children benefit from including social emotional learning programs? Teachers were asked if they implement social emotional learning in their classes. 33 participants mentioned they do, they do, they do implement. Nine participants mentioned they somewhat implement. There, they were asked if they think social emotional learning support they have addresses most of the social difficulties that appear or might appear in the class. 20 participants mentioned that it does. 20 participants mentioned that it somewhat does. And two participants mentioned that it does not address it. During the interviews, teachers were asked to share an example of a case where a student was able to use the strategy by himself or herself. During the coding process, we can see that nine teachers mentioned that the, in the cases that they use is when students have problems with emotions or feelings, with problem solving, and following directions. Here is a one example of a case that a teacher shared where a student was able to use the strategy by himself or herself. There was, there was this one time in which a student became very frustrated with the quality of his work and he wasn't satisfied with what he had accomplished. He was crying and when offered strategies, he chose to do some coloring. He later mentioned that he was feeling better and ready to try again. So here we can see that the teacher offered the student strategies when he was feeling very upset because of the quality of his work. And then when he was ready to go back to his ready learning body, he was he communicated the teacher. Mm -hmm. Question number two, what are the factors that are influenced 
were affected by the program. Teachers were asked were asked what social emotional learning supports they implement in their classroom. Here, teachers were able to choose more than one answer. The majority of the teachers chose to build community and teamwork, talking about emotions, encouraging positive self-talk, and give responsibilities. They also mentioned they use read, use read aloud, highlighting skills throughout the day. And to a lesser extent, they provide a daily check-in. Mm -hmm. Later, they were asked what benefits they see from using SEL support. The majority of the teachers mentioned that it improves self-regulation, reduces behavior problems, and more positive attitude towards them. They also mentioned that it creates the <laughs> community, teaches responsible decision-making, increases student motivation, and improves academic performance. Later in their interviews, they were asked specific areas where the student's life is influenced or affected by the program. By the current system, we can see that the majority of the teachers mention that it helps with the peer relationship and also with the emotions and feelings. Here's one example that a teacher shared. She said, I think the specific area that has the biggest impact in my students' lives by the program is social because it helps them to solve their own emotions and how to be with their friends. Also, to solve problems and not just fly off the handle when they get upset. Because of that, that impacts academics too, since they are happier and they are more supported. Mm -hmm. Question number three, what are the most effective strategies from the programs according to teachers? Teachers were asked which strategies the students use them. We can see that we can see that the majority of the teachers said that they used to talk about managing emotion mm -hmm. and to build community of teamwork. Also, to encourage positive self-talk, highlighting skills throughout the day, and giving responsibility. To a lesser extent, we can see that they used to provide providing a daily check-in and using read aloud. Teachers were asked if they find effectiveness in the program. 31 participants mentioned they do find, and 10 participants mentioned they somewhat find, and one participant mentioned that they do not, do not find. Mm -hmm. Later, they were asked why they find effectiveness in the program. And we can see here that the majority of the teachers mentioned that it helps students manage their emotions. Mm -hmm. During the interviews, teachers were asked to share the strategies they think is the most effective for teachers to implement. The majority of the teachers mentioned that they implement talking about emotions or managing emotions and positive self-talk and building a sense of a community. As for question number four, how could social emotional learning programs be given more important in children's daily lives? Teachers were asked if there is additional support needed to implement the practices fully. 23 participants mentioned they, they find that there is additional support needed. 10 participants mentioned they do not find. And 9 participants mentioned that they somewhat find. <coughs> During the interviews, teachers were asked to share recommendations for teachers that might implement SEL for the first time. The majority of the teachers mentioned the consistency with the language taught, also to investigate more about the topic, mm -hmm. to be in constant training, and to model their students. And also to share their perspective about how social emotional pro learning programs could be given more important in students' daily lives. Mm -hmm. We can see here that the majority of the teachers mentioned that it's important to include SEL in the daily life in small things, in the small details, in their everyday life. As for the main question, what factors make social and emotional learning an important program for the child's educational development? We can see that it helps with their emotional well-being, it improves the improvement of social skills, the improvement of academic performance, the reduction of behavioral problems, long-term success, and it contributes to a positive school climate. For the conclusions, the secondary questions, how can children benefit from including a SEO program? 
The participants agree that the most essential benefit they see in the improvement of their self regulation is their self regulation. Behavior problems are reduced and they have a more positive attitude toward themselves. Mm -hmm. The factors that are influenced or affected by the programs are their emotions, self regulation, and identification of beliefs. The most effective strategies from the program, according to teachers, are to talk about emotions and how to manage them. Also, positive internal dialogue. How could social emotional learning programs be given more important in children's daily lives? Teachers mentioned that emphasizing the support of the counseling department, constant training, and consistency with the program's language talk. And for the main question, what factors make social emotional learning an important program for the child's educational development? Mm -hmm. Social emotional learnings are favorable for students. Using SEO supports help students reduce their behavior problems, increase their motivation, improve their self-regulation, and a more positive attitude towards themselves. Okay. The implication of this study is that it is proven that SEO benefits students with their educational development. It also showed that participants find SEL addresses most of the social difficulties that appear or might appear in class. It mm -hmm. benefits students not only academically, but in their daily lives, and it mm -hmm. helps them manage their emotions, feel more motivated, and have a more positive attitude toward themselves. Yeah. As for the recommendation for further research, it's, it will be really interesting to compare elementary students from different schools to gain a more insightful result. Also, similar studies can be replicated among, among different populations, such as elementary school, middle school, and high school. It's also, it will be interesting also to include students' point of view to have more insights about the topic and to mm -hmm. interview parents and hearing their thoughts on SEL. Mm -hmm. And with no further ado, I leave this session open for yeah. questions from the professor. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Pia. Um, I uh, I really like the topic. Oh, sorry. Oops. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Yes. Yes. I I thought I was uh, that my mic was on silence. Um, so I was saying that I really enjoyed the topic, and uh, 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 I. I think that it was very interesting, and um, I have my questions. But I will leave uh, the examiners to do their the questions first. Okay, uh, so let me see. And um, do you have a question first, or do you want me to start? <laughs> I, I I can start. I have a question yeah. for Pia. Um, were you were you the one who approached the school with this idea, or had you, had you heard of a school that was wanting to implement uh, the, this system in their school? I had the opportunity to work in a school that implemented this program, mm -hmm. and comparing a little bit more when I went to another school that didn't approach this program, I could see a lot of differences between how students think about and how to handle mm -hmm. situations they're feeling so and i was working in the in in the counseling in the counseling team so i mm -hmm. was really really close to the develop of this curricula and i found it really interesting to mm -hmm. see how can we get this program to be to be more extend to extend to other schools that doesn't have the opportunity or doesn't have the knowledge to know mm -hmm. about the, the importance that this program has. So, so this came more from the, the counseling department or psychology department rather than from the, the classroom teacher. This yes. School. Yes. I, I yes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so let let me expand a bit. So it was the school decision to implement uh, social emotional learning uh, uh, across the curriculum uh, since uh, what age? Sorry, is it only since, primary or pre-primary as well? Since kinder five to uh, to fifth grade, all elementary school. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
so tell me um, let let me ask you the, the uh, a question now and you mentioned that uh, as a result you can see that children could manage their emotions so there is a, a direct uh, would you say that there is a direct um, implication uh, between classroom management and uh, social emotional learning or they're connected can we say yes yes you can see the the connection that it has because after all the lessons and mm -hmm. the constant use of the same language mm -hmm. for example with language i refer to um, uh, they used to they used to label their feelings into mm -hmm. zones yellow zone red zone green zone and blue yeah. zone so when they were feeling a little bit upset, upset they were in the blue zone so they there they had specific strategies to go back to the green zone which mm -hmm. it was the ready to learn zone so they were able to do that inner coach strategy mm -hmm. of the, okay i am feeling in the blue zone or i'm feeling in the yellow zone right now i'm gonna go and take a deep breath i'm gonna drink some water and i'm gonna try again okay so in a way, sorry, Valentina. <laughs> so in a way, uh, um, like the teacher was not the one uh, that has to reinforce all the time uh, for them to uh, auto-regulate that or regulate them. They were able to auto-regulate. Okay. Yes, yes, and they, they also had the visual, visual support in the classroom so they can they can label their feelings okay yes i think i'm feeling in the red zone right now mm. i think i need to talk to that adult right now yeah so that that is um very interesting i'm a bit biased because i do implement this and i'm very interested in the topic and i uh, i think that your research is very interesting and actually it reflects the the reality uh, because it, it, this approach can really help uh, us um, to give the tools to the, to the children so they can uh, regulate and that's what we want so that they can learn that okay and, and for them to be able to explore and know themselves mm -hmm. to see how, how, how what they are feeling in that moment and of course all emotions are are fine and we have all the emotions anytime right mm -hmm. we just need the right tools to, to control them mm -hmm. okay um, uh, valentina uh, can i ask another question or do you want to ask a question you tell yes can you hear me yes yes, yes. okay so first of all i'd like to congratulate pia for this um uh, very um important work that she did. Um, I don't have the written work candy and um, unfortunately I can't, during the presentation, I don't remember you saying if the school followed a specific curriculum for social emotional le uh, learning and I was curious to know which, which of these um, programs does the school follow, uh, first of all. For early childhood, they follow the zones of regulation, as I mentioned <laughs> before. And the, the, they do follow and identify the in colors they're feeling, strategies, and uh, uh, from third grade to fifth grade, they use second step. Mm -hmm. wow. And it's all about identification of, of feelings to manage emotions and to to create a positive mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for, for clarifying that because yeah. I, I don't no, have no, the no uh, problem. <laughs> Another thing yeah. that uh, I'd like to know, uh, to tell, uh, share with us, what is the main learning that you got from your um, thesis? The main learning I got is that social, emotional, and the mental part is very important in students, and not only because of because it increases and it helps with academics because you can see that students students get the feeling of that they are being listened, they are feeling that they feel that we care about them. 
mm-hmm. and that their emotions are valid and important. Mm-hmm. And so as I is- sorry, <laughs> sorry, and, and since I shared, that I changed to another school that doesn't have this program, and I, I thought that it was really important to share that teachers could implement this without a specific curriculum that the school follows. Mm-hmm. I am personally doing that to to have that opportunity to share that with my children. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, wonderful. So you're you're actually implementing uh, these strategies in your own teaching now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is something that you didn't have or you didn't know before you started your your um, research. I had a vague a vague knowledge of it, but I didn't have all the insightful data and how teachers felt with this program, if they needed more support, if they if, we, if the school can help them with something specific. It was really, really, mm-hmm. really interesting to know the perspective they had. Mm-hmm. Finally, sorry to ask you so many questions. <laughs> yes, um, <of> <laughs> um, so uh, finally, um, if you were to um, either continue on this work yourself or someone else uh, continue on this work. Uh, what do you think would be um, the best um, or the next step to take based on the findings of your study? I think the more the most interesting thing will be to compare with, between other schools to see how how different schools and their approach can be beneficial mm-hmm. and so we can follow all the same line and the same language and be beneficial for all kids mm-hmm. from the from Paraguay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, congratulations once again. And I think, Rocio, that we'll ask Pia now to leave the room. Yes, again. please. And we will let her know when she can come again. Okay? Okay. okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Pia. Okay. Qué lindo. Qué lindo ex- sí. En, eh, el problema yo como dije antes soy un poco biased I'm a bit biased because I do believe in this program and I use it in the school <laughs> and, eh, and, eh, and in primary it, it really works if, like in my opinion so eh, but eh, eh, reading Pia's work really helped me to see the, how other schools are implemented. So I think that her work, in my opinion, I would so say. In terms of the grading, what do you think about um, the, the written work and the presentation? Um, what? I, I think that they're both uh, quite strong. I mean, yeah. in a way, her presentation has to have this I don't know if it, on the phone we can do this. <laughs> the new <laughs> congratulations to the new licenciate. <laughs> Thank you, Professor, so much. Okay. Yeah, like good, good job. Uh, we like the way that you were able to answer all of the questions in a confident manner, and that you you knew your uh, your material. I felt that perhaps you had read your your presentation a bit too much instead of actually uh, speaking orally but with your um, answers of, to the questions it, it, it was obvious that you actually did understand everything that you were discussing and that you had no hesitation in giving further detail mm-hmm. so that that uh, that was good to, to have that uh, question mm-hmm. and answer session mm-hmm. thank you professor we uh, we enjoyed your presentation a lot <laughs> So have a wonderful weekend and you too. <laughs> and oh you can yeah. sorry. Go have a party. Yeah. <laughs> and then next week you can go to the university to get your uh, your grade from Christian <laughs> from Mr. Thank Christopher. You for everything and for everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, well, congratulations. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Have a good one. You Bye. Too. Bye. Bye. Okay.